Hello and welcome to another episode of MC Airsoft. My name is Mark and today we're going to be talking about the KJW Mark II. Um, brief disclaimer on that. Uh, I bought it from Evike. I'm sure it's available elsewhere, but at the time of recording it's sold out. Don't know if they're planning on restocking, if you're planning on getting one based off this review, but um, hunt it down where you can find it. Uh, so. Getting that out of the way, why did I pick the uh, KJW Mark II? Um, and it's because uh, I was having a conversation with one of my buddies who was uh, Marsoc during the late 2000s. We were talking about 22 caliber real steel pistols and uh, he brought up that in his armory at the time, they had a Ruger Mark II, or, you know, early 2000s, 22 caliber, might have been a Mark II, might have been Mark III, he didn't really remember kind of thing. <clears throat> and uh, that kind of piqued my interest and wasn't willing to spend the money on the real steel one. I already have a 22 revolver, so I went for the airsoft one. Uh, so it's a little bit of the collector, but also I was already looking at getting a new airsoft pistol. Um, I think pistols have their place. I don't use them as primary. I get that they can be made into primaries, especially for uh, speed QB or CQB kind of stuff. Um, I wanted one as a uh, secondary to my uh, Mark 12. Okay. So for that, it worked fine, uh, or it is working fine. Um, and also, you know, sometimes at the local field or the group I play with, sometimes we do pistol-only games or bring out your crappy gun games. Um, you know, the Walmart kind of quality, Big Five kind of quality, just fun, have it in the toolbox kind of um, kind of guns. And so this is kind of my go-to for that. Or um, sometimes for free-for-alls, uh, that kind of thing. It's not a primary, but I do use it as a primary occasionally. It's not great for that, and I'll get into a couple reasons why. But uh, as a secondary, it is unique enough to be interesting. It's a good project gun to get you into, uh, depending on what you want to do, get you into some more of the machining side rather than just uh, swapping out parts on an ADG. Again, nothing wrong with that. It takes a certain amount of skill, but it's different. Um, so, and the KJW one at the time of recording, again, it's sold out, but at the time of recording, Evi has a list for 80 bucks, which isn't bad for a non blowback, decent quality pistol, right? Uh, I decided I wanted non blowback because I'm a big believer in your pistol should do something your rifle can't, your rifle should do something your pistol can't. Right. Um, to me, if I'm on a semi only field uh, and the limit is 400 um, and, uh, you know, longest engagement distance is 200 feet, there's no point in, to me other than reliability sake, maybe. But if you have a reliable primary, there's no point in building out a pistol that is. You know, shooting at about that 400 mark, um, hitting at about 200 feet, you know, doing all the same things my primary already does. Um, so there's some CQB considerations, sure, uh, but um, I wanted it, one, as a, as a backup to my uh, DMR, because uh, I knew at that time that I was going to be building out a DMR, and two, I wanted it as... Um, something unique, something that did something different than my AEG. AEGs are fairly loud, and we'll get into just how loud this pistol is uh, momentarily. But again, it was a good price point, good reviews, good, you know, uh, upgradability, all those kind of things. Um, now that brings us to one of the first problems with it, that out of the box, um, it was shooting at about 460, right? That is 
sniper range at some fields, illegal in some countries, it is shooting hot, right? Because it's, um, from what I could find, it's more designed for um, target competitions, you know, especially in Japan, they host um, airsoft uh, target competitions, you know, kind of a three gun style match or an Olympic pistol style match or something like that um, with airsoft guns rather than real guns, rather than pellet guns. So um, it, as far as I can tell, it's more designed for that kind of thing. <clears throat> um, not for playing with. Uh, if your field allows you to rock 460 pistols, 460 plus pistols, um, go for it, I guess, if that floats your goat, but um, I'm not going to really stand here and recommend it, being that it's something that I can't use. I don't know of any fields that would allow its use at that. So you do have to do some teching. Right. Um, so you have to be able to um, open it up, basic, basic tools, but you have to have an understanding of how it works. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here. If people want that, they can leave comments and I'll do another video. But um, it's not really uh, out of the box. It's not. I can't recommend it. If you're willing to open it up and tinker on it, great. Uh, now, nice part about this is it is fairly easy to open up. Uh, that lever there on the back, um, you pull that down, you pull pull that down so it's open right there, okay? Um, you pull that out and then the top comes apart, comes apart real quick, fast, and in a hurry. Um, so, what did I do for modifications? Um, very briefly, there is a spring underneath that lever that you pull down. I added a BB to that, which got me to the right um, <clears throat> and took a couple coils off the spring, which got me to the right uh, FPS. Um, so, and I took out the metal ball bearing. Uh, so it's a, the, the spring's under less compression. Uh, the spring actuates the hammer that hits um, the button on the back of the magazine there, okay? So it hits it with less force, lets out less gas. Now that also means that my gas consumption went way down and I'm getting about 80 would be my guess shots, uh, maybe more if all of those shots actually had BBs behind them. Um, but I'm getting about 80 shots per canister of CO2, which in my book, real good. I don't want to be fiddling with that canister all day long. Um, the next thing I did is I went in and I trimmed down the hop-up unit, uh, added an O-ring. Again, if you want to see that in detail, we can do that at a later time. I'm just kind of overviewing what I did um, internally. So yeah, trimmed down the pop-up unit, added an O-ring. What that does is it makes sure the BB stays in the same spot every time, roughly, because airsoft guns, roughly. Uh, so that way, when the BB uh, goes into chamber, um, there's not as much variation shot to shot. <clears throat> um, I added a piece of tape around this fake bolt so it doesn't rattle around. Um, not really important. If you like that, you like it. If you don't, you don't. You can just add a piece of electrical tape. Um, and then I think that's it internally that I did to this gun. Uh, the only thing I bought to mod internally on this gun uh, were some six, uh, six millimeter inside diameter or no, six millimeter outside diameter, one millimeter ring size uh, or wall uh, o-rings I, I think what I got um, again we can go over that in more detail later if people want but um, so easy uh, that was the only thing about everything else was just working on it with tools um, so externally what did I buy for this this is not purchased uh, the rail segment there yeah there's a rail segment 
underneath that red dot not purchased uh, it's a cut down piece of rail from uh, actually the original rail on my DMR wasn't going to use it for anything so I slapped it on here or I cut off the part and slapped it on here <clears throat> so I can mount optics um, I also removed the original sights didn't need them anymore I was running an optic and frankly if that dies it's airsoft I'm going to be pointing and aiming and hoping anyway so at long ranges at short range instincts work so no uh, no irons um, there is a piece of uh, it is an extension for uh, you know an M4 barrel uh, airsoft obviously but uh, I think it's a four inch extension um, but you know if you get the four inch you can trim it down to what you need I think I took some distance off the back so the barrel uh, runs all the way to the end shortening the overall length uh, making it easier to get in and out of a holster right count uh, I have a uh, plastic uh, uh, birdcage flash hider um, just one that was originally on my Mark 18 threw it on here because uh, the Mark 18 didn't need any more uh, so I can mount uh, suppressors which we'll get to a se in a second um, the red dot is from HPA uh, I won it in a um, um, raffle at the, at the Lion Claws event I went to uh, it is pretty much the same as my red dots on my rifles okay just mirrored okay now, the reason I put that on this one is because I'm a left hand rifle right hand pistol so left hand rifle I can have my um, trigger finger my left hand on the pistol grip and my right hand can find that knob turn it real easy whatever it needs to do uh, for pistols since I shoot those right handed I can manipulate that with my left hand. Uh, that was my thought process behind that. Um, I'm a big fan of these style of red dots. Um, I have one on the AK, one on the Mark 18, one on the pistol. Uh, so put that on there. Uh, I had a Lancer red dot, which was fine. Just I uh, wanted uh, a tubular one uh, because I find these red dots a little easier to pick up in bright environments. So if you're playing outside during the day, that's a lot easier to see. Now, in addition to that, something I'm experimenting with is the little red dot on the back of the receiver there. Um, the idea, and we can go over this more when I am more comfortable explaining it, but the idea is that uh, you look at your back plate to shoot. Right, so uh, it's quicker to pick up, and if you have good pistol fundamentals, you can present out nice and straight. You can get your um, you can get your receiver straight, your barrel straight onto the target. Uh, that's going to be easier to pick up, and if you shoot with both eyes open like you should be, um, then I can. Not going to say everyone, but I can still see the target, and I can see the red dot superimposed on the target. And it's something I'm experimenting with. Um, I also have that on one of my real steel pistols, so I might revisit that at a later time uh, to explain that in more detail if people want. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, another thing to point out is the mag suck on this. Okay. Uh, so, one, the magazine release is the European style, it's down here. Uh, so, you kind of have to fiddle with it, uh, you have to press the mag release and pull out the um, magazine. Uh, it's true to form of the Rugers, but eh, I don't like it. Um, eventually, I do plan on uh, drilling and modifying the, uh, the frame in order, to, um, in order to put in a uh, American style mag release or a um, normal mag release. Um, so yeah, that is something to mention. The other reason the magazines suck is the BBs will pop out if you jostle the magazine without it in the gun. Okay, how it's situated there. 
Okay. The BBs will stack and curl back on themselves. Now it's not loaded because there's a fresh CO2 cartridge. We're going to do some sound things on this, but um, the BBs will jostle themselves out. Um, so if you have a second magazine, something to be aware of. If you have a well-fitted Kydex magazine uh, holder for it, uh, maybe that would fix it. I haven't gotten around to making one yet, but um, something to keep in mind. I only have the one magazine for it, so as I buy more magazines, maybe that'll change. Uh, another thing to point out is the magazine uh, plate on the bottom did break, okay? Um, and that was, I think I dropped it, um, so, but it's pop metal, um, you can only expect so much, and it doesn't affect the functionality of it, and also it has, uh, grip tabs on the sides, so if you really need to strip it, you can come down to the sides to strip it, um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so... Um, so one of the main reasons I bought it is because of how quiet it is. Now it's not, I'm in my garage, it's not going to sound the best in here. Um, but my, uh, at my local field, it is best, it has been described multiple times by multiple people as stupid quiet, even with the, um, even with the, uh, suppressor off. We'll get to the suppressor in a second. Uh, so, <clears throat> with details on what that is, but let me grab that. I have it in a suppressor pouch, dead center on the back. Uh, it is a quick detach suppressor, so no threading or anything, which would make it quieter um, if, uh, if it was threaded on, but I wanted something quick detachable. But uh, with, so no BBs as you saw in the magazine, but no BBs, um, with the suppressor on, and with the suppressor off. It takes a lot of that um, snappiness out of it. Okay. Um, so, it does what I need it to do. Does it make it dead quiet? No. Does it make it as quiet as um, the... Uh, was it Mark 23s? I don't know. I don't have a Mark 23. Uh, so to compare it to maybe someday, but not right now. Um, the suppressor is a, um, <clears throat> it's an old school style suppressor with the holes drilled in it. I like one. I like the look Two, It was the closest to what, uh, the picture of Travis Haley, uh, he had in his, so that's what I went with. Uh, it does um, come apart at the front end only, not at the back end. Um, and I have uh, three of the uh, rubber um, flaps in there uh, and then uh, upholstery foam, which is just a uh, Walmart upholstery foam with holes cut into it, uh, cut into cylinders and then holes poked into it with the soldering iron and then the rubber gloves cut down and then I colored the end black just so it doesn't look as weird if you're looking into it, right? Okay. <clears throat> um, that's more of an aesthetic thing than a functionality thing, but whatever. Uh, so it has um, uh, three baffles essentially, um, but of course this is not a real suppressor it would probably explode um if it was uh, there's a lot of gases that would be messing with the aluminum here not a suppressor or real suppressor but it works enough for airsoft um, one of the issues with it is that it does not lock onto the uh, flat section here it locks into the rings so you can Put it on, snap it into place, okay, and spin it. Now I am not unscrewing the uh, flash hider. You can see that little flat area is staying still. It just uh, <clears throat> spins. 
it doesn't really bother me that much. Again, I don't really use that, that this that often. Um, but one thing to keep in mind is with how the flaps are cut, um, you're going to have a majority of the backspin. Um, let me take this off to explain this. Um, so the flaps are cut in an X pattern. They do not have just a hole punched into them. And the reason being is because it is supposed to help not impede the hop up. So you can see that top flap is cut in a V notch down or an X, uh, but there is a V coming down the top there. And what that's supposed to do is maintain or at least not decrease as much the uh, hop up coming out of this thing. Not really sure if it works or if there's better design, but it's what I went with based on YouTube videos uh, talking about it and uh, it works so far. Uh, what kind of range am I getting? Honestly, getting about the same as uh, most of the Lancers out there that uh, are on the field. Um, I'm getting a little bit less than the Adaptive Armament Mark 18. Um, I'm probably getting, uh, I could probably reliably hit a person um, at 150 feet, um, 125 to 150 feet. Obviously, wind's going to be a factor in all that, BB weight, which I am running primarily 0.32s out of this. Uh, it doesn't seem to like with 0.3s as much. Um, and uh, it's, uh, I could go hotter, maybe 0.4s, but I just haven't tried it. Um, because frankly, I don't use this enough to justify feeding it 0.4s, which are much more expensive. Um, I do need to figure out a better solution for this uh, back holster, um, but uh, for right now it works. I've only lost the suppressor at once, so uh, I do need to figure out a better solution for that, but uh, yeah. Um, anything else? Oh, the holster I'm using um, is actually uh, donated from a friend. Um, I don't like things down on my thighs, um, gets into chafing, it's just not, um, very comfortable. And for me, I'm fine running off my hip. That's where I carry my real pistol, uh, on a daily basis. It's, uh, where I carried, uh, my M9 for a while between that and in a mag pouch on my plate carrier. Um, so I'm fine with that. Uh, what this is, is a, uh, 1911, uh, holster. <clears throat> and, uh, I cut the, some of the lacings. It is a pain to redo, uh, but the pistol also fits fairly snug, so I'm not terribly worried about it coming out if the button is undone. <coughs> it is an old style leather, uh, canted. Uh, 1911 holster uh, so and as a thumb safety so coming over the top undoing the button pulling out works just fine and also um, it's even pushing on the bottom okay pulling on the top it is snug in there uh, so I'm not too worried about it um, but yeah uh, so that's about it that's about what I wanted to say on that uh, if anyone wants more information, wants to deep dive into the modifications, whatever, leave that down in the comments and I can get to that in a later video. But until next time, stay safe and stay hydrated.